Shaw Hockett. I'm with an organization called SPACES, which stands for Safe Places for the Advancement of Community Inequity. The essence of my work around SPACES, it is about creating transformative gathering spaces where people who don't look alike, don't talk alike, don't think alike, haven't lived alike, can come together and build a deeper sense of community with one another. And through that process, begin to see bits and pieces of themselves in the other person. And using that as a foundation for us to engage in collective action together in ways that we have not done thus far. One of my favorite notions about my job as an organizer is to make the question, how are you doing, actually mean something again, because there was a time that it did. And so what I mean by that is, as humans, the way many of us live our days is, I'll say, how are you? And you'll say in a reflex response, I'm fine, I'm okay. But rarely do we ever get to the deeper conversation about why are you fine and okay? If you are not fine or okay, rarely do you even share that with the person who asks, how are you doing? Because there's this notion that as humans, we really don't want to know how each other are doing. It requires a radically different approach, and that approach has to involve us on a daily basis. My observation that each of us is violating and repairing trust multiple times throughout the day in very small ways that we may not even be conscious of. When you think about communication and the fact that what science says about human communication, it's 55% body language, it's 38% tone, the emotion that we put into what we say. Only 7% of communication is the actual words that we use. And so even at the level of communication, I may interact with another person with every intention of wanting to project myself as a trustworthy person. But there are all sorts of micro signals that I think we send to each other that may have the other person to internalize something different. There are times when I'd be talking to somebody and they're in conversation with me and then their phone goes off and they're talking to me and at the same time they're saying, Deshaun, I'm listening to you. I'm listening to you, just, but keep talking, keep talking. And I've always said to myself, well, wow, what if I was not conscious um, and if I wanted to internalize that the wrong way, what message does it send for you to be in communication with another person, but they're looking at their Blackberry and they're typing? I think that each of us, we are constantly sending micro signals to people, oftentimes unintentionally, oftentimes at the level of subconscious, oftentimes um, having nothing to do with us, but having to do with how the other person internalizes our action. Because of this reality, I think building trust demands being able to read and pick up any signal between us and others about how trust may have been violated. Part of what I try to do, even in my in my one-on-one -on -one interactions with people, is is to model this notion of what it means to create space. That includes me oftentimes being the first person in an interaction, in a relationship, to take the risk, to be vulnerable, 
and to share things about myself that people probably don't share in day-to-day -day conversations with people. And so I try to model what it means to be a risk taker, what it means to be vulnerable in a healthy way in order to create space and give permission to other people to do the same.